The summer is winding down and we're about to hit the ice. Fantasy draft season is upon us in the hockey realm. So today on the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast, we're breaking down the ever-tough Atlantic Division previews, faders, risers, and everything that you need to know to get this money. Thank you for joining us for the Tuesday episode. Let's tap in. You're Locked On Fantasy Hockey, your daily podcast on fantasy hockey. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, everybody? And welcome back inside the lab to your source for fantasy hockey news. It's the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. I'm joined, as always, by my distinguished co-host, Mr. Steel Roden. And on this side of the microphone, it's your boy, Big Flip Livingstone. Thank you for making us your first listen every single day. On today's episode, we're taking a look at the Atlantic Division Steel, one very near and dear to our hearts. We watch a whole lot of Atlantic Division hockey on this podcast, and it's going to get a little bit spicy on today's episode. So we hope you enjoy it, and I hope all of our listeners out there, Steel, are getting fired up for our listener leagues. September 20th is the cutoff. We'll keep dropping it every episode, Nuggets, and the ways that you can be a part of it. Thank you for all the interest so far. Steele, you know this Atlantic division is going to be a bloodbath, and I wanted to just start the conversation this way. We did the Central, then we did the Pacific, then we did the Metro, and now we're on to the Atlantic. And I think, actually, in terms of power rankings, this year, how I think it's going to shake out in terms of the best teams, I'd actually maybe put them in that order. Central in fourth, Pacific in third, Metro second, and the Atlantic in first. And this yep. is going to be a tough one. What do you think about that take? Uh, exactly right. Um, you know, maybe maybe the Pacific's a little bit tougher than the Central. You know, the Central teams, uh, you know, the top three teams in that division, Colorado, Dallas. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then for me, it's Minnesota. I know you had Winnipeg in there. Yeah. So I think the Pacific is a little bit tougher than the uh, Central Division. Mm. But yeah, you're right. Atlantic and Metro, the Eastern Conference is the legit threat. There's so much competition, so mm. much skilled players over there. Yep. And especially this Atlantic Division. Yes, uh, every team that was at the bottom last year, the, the Montreal Canadiens, uh, the Montreal Canadiens, the Detroit Red Wings, the Ottawa Senators, the Buffalo Sabres even continue to get better and better every single year. Most definitely. And this is obviously a subjective thing, but overall on paper, this is what we're saying. And I think the Metro division is right there. Anyway, let's dive into it. Montreal, I have in the eight spot steal. I think this is the clear and away choice. And not to say that they haven't gotten a little bit better. They're going to have a healthy Cole Caulfield. Another couple of years with some of these, you know, more experienced young guys now. I love Nick Suzuki. I know you're mm-hmm. with me on Sam Montembeau. He's been really good. But I'm saying they're in the basement. 63 points. I'll keep this one tight. A healthy Cole Caulfield. There aren't many players in the NHL steal that score at a 40-goal clip. Before he got hurt, he was on pace for 46. And I believe there were 16 guys in the NHL that hit the 40 mark last year. That puts Caulfield in elite goal-scoring level category. Peripherals aren't there, but I love him on the rise. I also like Montembeau at the back end of drafts as a fill-in. This team takes a lot of shots on net, though, so I'm wary. And honestly, Steel, aside from Suzuki and maybe Matheson, I'm fading the rest of this team. I don't see a ton of fantasy value to be had here unless it's really, really deep drafts or you know me in that fantasy keeper side of things. Yeah, I also have the Montreal Canadiens here at number eight in the Atlantic Division. I don't have them as low for total points uh, okay. as you do. I have them finishing with 77 points at the Whoa. end of the season. Uh, I think that, you know, they are going to be a lot better. They missed Cole okay. Caulfield a lot last year okay. after that shoulder injury. True. Uh, you know, I'm really excited to see what that top line of Caulfield, Suzuki, and Kirby Doc in full throttle going this next yeah, year. Alex Newhook point. could be a very interesting piece as well in that second yeah. line. Uh, for, for me, a guy that I'm going to be fading – uh, is probably this. I think this is an easy answer, but I'm going with Jake Allen. I do think Sam Montebo is that goalie that the uh, Montreal Canadiens yeah. are going to be going with a lot this next season, Most even the, the years after that. Because he, he, you know, again, struggled with the group in front of him, mm-hmm. but overall, I thought he was tremendous last year uh, and the skill set mm-hmm. that he has. So yeah. I'm, I'm going to be fading Jake Allen because Sam Montebo is that guy. Okay. Uh, right. And then for me, I, on the rise, 
is mm. going to be Michael Matheson as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, four, 34 yep. points in 48 games last year. Had 80 blocks, 53 hits. Only played the 48 games, but still had 34 points. So I'd be very excited to see what he does Me as too. that top left defense for the uh, Montreal Canadiens this upcoming season. But mm -hmm. I think uh, I think a lot of people would be in consensus here that the Montreal Canadiens are still at the bottom of the Atlantic Division. Most definitely, and to clarify on how many 40 goal men there were in the league last year, 19 of them steal. So I think there is a lot of value with Cole Caulfield. I appreciate your take on Matheson as well. If you're good with it, though, and the reason why I said 63 points is I just think, yeah, they did get better. I just don't see where the the wins are going to go. So many better teams. So I agree with you fully. I just, for some so reason. They had 68 points last year. So you think they're going to have less points? I, last do, year? I do think they're actually going to have less. Even though there are better, I just think the competition level around them, it's just going to be tough. And I think overall, there's just up and down. There's parity in this division. And I really do think every single team got better except for maybe the Toronto Maple Leafs and of course the Boston Bruins but we'll talk about that steal won't we let's get to the number seven <laughs> slot because I think we're going to start to maybe differ on opinions here perhaps I've been talking up the Detroit Red Wings for a couple of years but again I just don't see where these points are going to come from so I have Detroit in seventh I'm worried about Billy Huso and I think there is a lot of value to be had here though Marit Sider is going to have a bounce back year in my opinion Alex DeBrincat is a guy to watch, especially Steele. And I know this is a big caveat, but the rumors out today were that Patrick Kane has been wanting to follow DeBrincat wherever he goes because of the chemistry that they used to have. And now the rumor is that Kane has his eyes zeroed in on the Red Wings. If somehow they get power play time together, I like DeBrincat's numbers to go up even more because we know what they can do together. And I'm worried about Lucas Raymond Steele. Last year, there was a lot of hype around this guy, and I know he's going to probably get to play on that top line or at least get a chance. I just had to pick a guy to fade because I do think this is a team on the rise. I just think there's going to be too many teams in this division steal, and this was really, really tough for me to formulate this list. But I'm saying fade Raymond till the back end of the draft because I'm just a little worried. And Sider, Debrinkat, and even this kid Edvinson, who might get a look for them, I really like some of these young pieces steal. Yeah, I, I also have the Detroit Red Wings here at number seven. I have them finishing yeah. with the exact same points they finished with last year, 80 points on the mm. season. If Patrick Kane does sign with the Detroit Red Wings, I think they'll, that will change mm. my uh, my opinion on Detroit mm. a little bit. Me uh, just, too. Just a, just a little yeah. bit, but not enough to move them up in the Atlantic standing. So I have them at Fair. number seven, finishing with 80 points. For me, I'm going to take uh, you know a little bit of a gamble here and a sure. guy on the rise. Someone Ooh. that we've talked a little bit about, but yes, someone sir. who has also struggled with a lot of injuries and a lot of things off the ice. And that's Robbie Fabry uh, mm. on, on the left wing side. Uh, 16 points in 28 games last year. He had 49 yeah. hits, 15 blocks, and 35 shots. I think if he can stay healthy or at least play upwards of 70-plus games, then we mm. could see him get to at least – at least 45 points, maybe even 50. I think he has that skill set, just being able to actually stay healthy and play with uh, play in the lineup and get that chemistry going is the big question mark for him. So I'm going to say Robbie Fabry again, take a mm. chance on him maybe in the last couple of rounds of the draft. Uh, fading though, I'm going to go with Shane Gauchespierre. Uh, I'm not really sure how much uh, power play time, if any, if he's going to get, you know, second power play unit, perhaps. I'm not sure mm. how great that second power play unit will be because the, uh, the Detroit Red Wings struggled a lot last year. Right. Um, I, yeah, I'm going to go with Shane Gauchespierre. I just don't know how he's going to be with Justin Hall on that bottom third pairing. And to be clear, were you fading Robbie Fabry or you got your eyes on him on the rise? On the rise, on the rise. Oh, interesting. Good Guelph Storm alum. The injuries have been the factor because when Robbie Fabry has been healthy, he's a good offensive piece. It's a bit of a bold take by yours because I don't know if I'm really willing to gamble on his health, but when he is healthy, I like what you're saying. So I, I think in the last couple, you. I think in the last couple of rounds of the draft, like why yeah. not again, yeah. like if why he not? can play upwards of 70 plus games, I think he has sure. that skill set exactly. uh, to do a lot of things, even the peripheral stats, uh, especially the hits uh, mm. I'm looking forward to. So if he can stay healthy, then that's a, that's a guy I'm going to, you yeah. know, keep in my back pocket there. Detroit had the 17th best power play last year, cooking at 21%. And I think Gostas Bears role here is going to try and charge that number up a bit. If that happens, I think he will have some value steal, but I agree. I'm not willing to take a risk on him in the front half of the draft. It's going to have to be, there's a lot of bodies on that blue line in Detroit. So their mm -hmm. ice time is going to be a concern for me. 
But if he does start to get looks on the top power play unit, there's enough talent there offensively that I might be taking a look on him. But that's the kind of thing people keep it tapped to the show. We'll have all the analysis through the training camps, exhibition games, line rushes, what's happening, who's playing with who, and who you need to be drafting. We're going to continue to break down this division right after the break. Six through one in the Atlantic. But we got to pay these bills, baby. And today is brought to you by our friends, at AG1, we started taking AG1, Steele and I. We liked it before and after the gym. It's a foundational nutrition supplement that delivers comprehensive nutrients to support whole body health. Athletes around the world, experts in the health game, all love AG1. It replaces your multivitamin, probiotic, and more in one simple drinkable habit. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, you got to try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs. With your first purchase, go to drinkag1.com slash NHL network. That's drinkag1.com slash NHL network. Check it out today. And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. We are a part of the Locked On Podcast Network where you can find your favorite team from all four major sports leagues, including the NCAA, your team, every single day. And thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Leave us a five-star review. Follow us on your favorite podcast mm-hmm. platform. We appreciate all that love and support you show us every single day. And make sure you stay tuned for Wednesday's episode. Flip and I got a mock draft special yes. episode for Wednesday. So make sure you're tuning back in. It's our first of four or five probably over the next month mm-hmm. uh, up until the season starts. So again, make sure you're tuning in. Usually we'll do it on Monday, but uh, yeah. it was a long weekend. It was family day. So we're spending family time day, with baby. the family, yep. uh, but we'll make up for it for tomorrow's episode uh, on Wednesday. Continuing, though, with the number six position, mm-hmm. I'm actually going to throw this back over to you. Uh-oh. Yeah, I want yeah. Your, put the heat I on. You, Here I'm we go. putting the heat on you because I want yep. to hear what you have to say first well, before I make my final decision. I completely respect that, Steel. Throw me right under the bus. I'm ready for it because <laughs> this, is, this is the honest truth when I looked at this division. I think this is the weakest division in terms of goaltending. Uh, there's a lot of question marks on a lot of these teams, aside from Tampa Bay, seriously. Yeah. There is a lot of question marks for a lot of these teams. You know, Buffalo, new rookie, Ottawa, can Corposalo do it? Anyway, we'll continue to talk about that, but I just think it's a bit of a crapshoot steal. So that's what I want to throw out there before you hate me on this. Number six spot, the Florida Panthers surprised a lot of teams last year. Sergey Bobrovsky had a 901 save percentage in the regular season. And honestly, considering how good the teams are around them, I think they were lucky to get in. I'm not going to take anything away from the run that they put on because Matthew Kachuk took his team and put him on his back. Bobrovsky stood on his head. This team is banged up steel. Brandon Montour is injured. We don't know what's going on with Kachuk, really. He had a cracked sternum. That's a serious injury to come back from. And I'm really worried about Bobrovsky. He was pretty garbage for most of the year. And then we know what he did in the cup final. And it won't take away. Florida is in the sixth spot. Only one point shy from the team I have in the fifth spot. And that's the Boston Bruins deal. So I think the five and six spot are going to be Boston and Florida. My riser, though, very quickly before you get it back to me. I like Evan Rodriguez this year. And I think he's going to get a good look to play in the top six. And I think given that he's not really a household name steal in the fantasy game, we know he's a useful player like a plug-and-play weekly waiver wire ad. I like his ability this year in the top six to be effective. And Bobrovsky is getting faded by me heavily. I'm concerned about what he can do after all that hockey on his body as well, Steele. He's an older dude, but I'm fading Bob to the back end. Maybe I take him as my third goalie if I have three spots. Yeah, definitely a possibility. I know. He's on my fantasy t- uh, fantasy team last year as well. And, mm. you know, there was, the, there was the games where it didn't help, and then there was games where he stood on his head a little bit. Yep. So uh, you get a little bit of both sides of Sergey Bobrovsky. I'm a little bit surprised that you have Florida yep. Panthers at number six, but yep, I'm not going to hate on it too hard. At number six, I actually have the Boston Bruins. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. And I have them finishing with 90, 91 points. That's almost a 40-point differential from their, uh, yeah. you know, their – you know, their, the history they made last year, finishing yep. with 134, I believe it was. But the reason why, there's many reasons, but this team just is not the same as it was last year. They Again, we've talked no. about this. They lose Krejci, they lose Bergeron, but right. they bring in James Van Riemsdyk, you know, Pavel Zaka is the first-line centerman, Oof. Charlie Coyle is the second-line centerman. 
a bunch of guys, you know, they bring back Milan Lucic for the fourth line grind mm-hmm. position. Yeah. I don't like a lot of the guys they actually brought in. The only guy I really like is Morgan Geeky. And I know you like him as well. Me too. And then I know the big question mark for you is can Linus Allmark do what he did last year again? Mm-hmm. Or does Jeremy Swayman take more control of the blue paint? So they're still going to be a good team. I don't mm. think they're even going to get close to 134 points. I have them yeah. in the sixth uh, in the sixth position okay. with uh, 90 points. At number five, though, I have the Ottawa Senators. Uh, oh, mm. sorry. You know what? On the rise, though. On the rise with yeah, yeah, for the Boston me. Bruins. I'll go yeah. with Morgan Geeky as well. We talked a little yeah. bit about him. And then on the decline or on the uh, you know a player to fade. Yeah, I'm actually going to go with Charlie McAvoy. I think he mm, does bring the okay. points, but the peripheral okay. stats just aren't there. He doesn't put enough shots, doesn't put enough blocks, doesn't put enough hits. Uh, so I'm going to go with Charlie McAvoy. Still a draftable player, but he's going to fade down that draft board for me. Okay. Uh, okay. Just those peripheral stats. At number five, though, I have the Ottawa Senators finishing with uh, 94 points on the season. Again, this this is a bubble playoff team for me right now. They continue to get mm. better and better. Um but yeah, I have them at 94 points just because I like the other four teams I had ahead, ahead of them a lot more than the Ottawa Senators right now. Fair. On the rise for me, okay. I'm going to go to Vladimir Tarasenko. If he's playing Whoa. on that, if he's playing on that Whoa. top line, if he's playing on that top line with your boy, Timmy Stutzla, and that beast of a captain, Brady Kachuk, there's mm. no way. True. that he doesn't get more fantasy points than he had last year and the peripheral stats. And yeah. we know this guy can score when okay. he's on his game. So if he is That's... on that top line, yep. I'm going I'm I'm rising him a ton. Uh if he's playing on that top line. That's a big a player, to fa- a player to fade though. I'm going to go to Shane Pinto. I think uh you know as that third line centerman, he's still going to be a very valuable asset for the Ottawa Senators, mm-hmm. but there's a lot of question marks about how much more and how much consistency that Pinto can bring to this very uh you know this very young team as well, very skilled yeah. team with a lot very of players skilled. in front of him. So I'm going to go with Shane Pinto as a guy to fade down the board. Whew, there's a lot to take in that you just threw at me here. Let me just finish off my Boston take here cuz I have Boston in 5th and for the record I have Boston finishing only one or two points higher than Florida. So I'm really not trying to slide Florida too heavily. And I see after we looked at the standings last year in this division, I think it's going to be equally as tight, if not tighter when it comes to all the chips being down steel. So I think it was what Tampa finished with 98 points, Florida at 92, 91 for Buffalo, 86 for Ottawa and Detroit had 80. So realistically, mm-hmm. those three through seven teams, I know Tampa had 18 more points than Detroit. I think that's going to tighten up even more. So I just want to say this about Boston. I think they're at a tipping point. I think the Leafs are going to probably finally take the turn on this series. I hope Steele <laughs> will get to that conversation. Anyway, Morgan Geeky for sure on the rise. And I think Jake DeBrusque is going to get a really good chance to finally settle in in that top six. It's been tough for him, right? There's been a lot of good players in the mix. And I think he might now have a good shot at being a valuable piece. And I got to fade Linus Allmark because there's going to be a lot of guys going, oh my gosh, he led the league in goals against historically good season. Vesna trophy winner. Don't reach on this guy. The team isn't going to be as good. This isn't a bold take steal. Yeah, he's still going to probably take the lion's share of the starts to at least begin the season. I think it could be Jeremy Swayman's crease by the end of the year. So I don't want to reach on Omar too much, and I'll slide right into my fourth spot if you're okay with it. Yeah, Buffalo Sabres, 95 points in the fourth spot. I'm worried about the rookie goaltender in Levi. I know he's looked real good. I know we like his pedigree. He looked very solid in minimal action. It's a rookie goaltender. This is what I was alluding to with all the question marks. The Buffalo Sabres scored the second most goals in the NHL last year. Still, let me just double check Mm -hmm. this. So we know that they're an offensive juggernaut. Third most, seven behind the Boston Bruins. But... He's a rookie. I'm not saying fade him because I do think he's going to be valuable. I'm just a little bit worried about the back end in Buffalo on the rise, though. J.J. Paterka, middle stat, and Owen Power for me. I really like Paterka. On any other team, he's probably already in the top six. The Buffalo Sabres just have so much going on up front. 
And I think middle stat has been really, really good. I had a good stat for you here on middle stat too. Steal one second here. <laughs> you know me in the numbers, baby. Oh, here we go. Last season, in the final 33 games, he had 31 points, and he was really on the rise. So I like Middlestad in that spot, and there's a real tough one to fade on this team, Steel. So much to like. So Levi would be the one that I'm just leaving till maybe a little later. I don't want to get too hyped too early, which you know I like to do on young pieces. <laughs> I think his time is almost here. I'm just saying there might be a little bit of growing pains, especially when we're talking about how much better this division got and how many good teams he'll be up against. There is a lot of great teams in this division. That's probably why it's the number one toughest one Bang. in the National Hockey League. I also have the Buffalo Sabres in the fourth position here. I have them finishing with 95 points on the season. Mm -hmm. I like that they bring in Eric Johnson. I like that they bring in Connor Clifton. Um, and obviously, Rasmus Dallin is absolute beast. Owen Power heading into his, what, second or third season in the National Hockey League third. as well. Yeah. Uh, third, I believe. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, but very excited about uh, what Owen Power brings uh, to the table this next season as well. I actually love uh, Devin Levi in this upcoming mm -hmm. season. You know, if, if, lots if of love. The fact that lots of love. The fact that Buffalo uh, was 42, 33, and seven, finished with 91 points, and they had Craig Anderson, a 40, 41 year old, I believe he was mm -hmm. at the time, mm -hmm. as well as Uka Pekka Lukanen, who just had not a lot of consistency to his game. Yeah. So yeah. I really like Devin Levi coming yeah. into that crease and potentially being that number one guy moving forward. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm also with you on this. On the rise for me is Casey Middlestat. I talked a lot about him a few weeks ago. True. Uh, he's got the points. Again, like you said, 31 points in the last 33 games, I believe you yep. said. But yep. I final, like that he's playing 33. with I like that he's playing with Dylan Cousins. I like that he's playing with JJ Paterka. Again, if he can just increase those peripheral stats, shots on net, blocks, and even a little bit more yeah. hits. Yeah. Uh, his his value, his fantasy value is going to skyrocket, in my opinion. So uh, our boy Michael Amato actually just tweeted about him the uh, right. the other day as well yeah. uh, as a guy to keep an eye out for for this upcoming like season. We're going to get to our top three positions in the Atlanta division coming up next. But thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. We appreciate all that love and support you show us all week long remember mm -hmm. hit the subscribe hit the follow button leave a five-star review on your favorite podcast platform it really does help us a lot we are so close to a thousand subscribers on youtube so keep hammering that subscribe button and again if you want to be a part of the fantasy hockey league we got a casual and competitive league league coming up the deadline if you want to enter is september 20th draft days will be september 27th and 28th it looks like but again if you want to be a part of a part of it dm us Give us your information. We'll put you down on the list and enter uh, for an enter uh, of that draw. I believe, Flip, mm. uh, we'll send some polls out over the next couple of days with some more league, uh, more uh, fantasy league details about what to expect this upcoming season. But it's already been determined. We're moving over to Yahoo uh, mm -hmm. for the Fantasy Hockey League as well yep. as we're going to determine the prices. That is true, Steele. And don't forget, make sure you drop us that five-star review. Like, subscribe, share and drop us some feedback. We're here for you guys. We love hearing from you. DMs are always open. Steele and I are constantly watching, chatting, breaking down trades. Earlier today, we're talking about who we should keep. Let us know what you want us to talk about. We're here for y'all, and I hope we continue to help you guys get this money because that's what we're about, Steele. And money season <laughs> is coming. Bets will be back, people. We'll be breaking down our favorite bets as well every single night. Shout out to FanDuel. Steele, let me take it away with my third spot because I think we're going to be very clear on who the top two teams are. And I want to just get back to this Ottawa conversation because you know how I feel about that team and that town and that franchise. But I have to look at this very objectively. And I honestly think this team has enough talent to be a very serious playoff threat if Jonas Corposalo can be a number one goalie. And in his career, he showed some serious flashes of being able to do it. But yep. then at other times, he shrunk away from the opportunity. So I think this team has lacked that real confidence in the back end. And I think that's what they need. This is a young team still, right? And the blue line is young as well. Jacob Trickner makes them a very legitimate unit on the back end. And I see Jake Sanderson on the rise, Steele. That's who is one of my risers. Yeah. 
I think he can easily put up 40, 50 points. I see a little bit of hate out there about Jake Sanderson. He's still a very young piece. Let's give him time. I'm going to say 45 to 50 points is very much in his realm. And I think those steal. Corpusalo is also one to keep an eye on. And this ties to the fact that I just expect this team to be so much better. So I think he is going to be better. 18, 14, and four for Corpusalo last year. But the 9, 14 save percentage is what I like the most. He can stop pucks, but can he be the number one guy? Can he be consistent? And can he deal with the likes of Austin Matthews, Steven Stamkos, and all the other killers that the Atlantic Division now has in it? It's a big question. But I have this team in third with 96 points, and I'm worried about Tarasenko Steele because if he doesn't get that top line, he might be down the lineup all the way and playing on the third line so they can spread out some talent. I don't know what's going to happen. I I know you don't, but right now, at this point in the year, we don't even know where he's going to get rushed out there. These are early projections. I love daily face-off, but they haven't seen any practices. They haven't seen any line rushes. This is what (laughs) makes sense for sure. I don't know if I really want to risk him too high in the draft is what I'm saying, though, because also if this team gets off to a cold start steal, you know, they're going to be shuffling the deck because of all the talent they have up front. So I'm just worried about the deployment. But anyway, Ottawa is the team I have in third because offensively, I think that might be good enough for them to carry this team all the way to the playoffs just based on that. Yeah, they definitely have the talent up front and on the on the blue line. I don't know why Jake Sanderson gets a, a ton of hate because as a rookie defenseman, mm-hmm. uh, I thought he played absolutely fantastic. I think maybe last hate year. is I, that was I misspoke. Maybe just not enough credit. How about that? Not enough credit. I think that's the right uh, the right Thank phrase you. to use for Jake Sanderson, especially in his a rookie as a rookie defenseman. I um, yeah yeah he did, definitely did yep. not get enough credit from a lot of us out there. Uh, he deservingly needed a lot more credit than that. At number three, though, I have the Florida Panthers. Mm. I have them finishing with 100 points. So this is obviously the big one that you and I are disagreeing on right yeah. now. You had them in sixth. I have them in third. Mm-hmm. On the rise for me is also Evan Rodriguez. I think yeah. playing on that top line or even the yeah. second line. Yeah, uh, either of either league. of those guys. Yeah. He's going to get a ton of time. He's going to get a ton of power play time mm. as well. I think they're, you know, I'm a little bit worried with their defensive group. Obviously, they bring in Oliver Ekman Larson. They bring in Dmitry Kulikov, uh, Mike Riley, and Nico Mikola. But again, Aaron Ekblad and Brandon Montour are injured right now. So mm-hmm. when they jump back into the lineup, things are going to be a lot different for them on the blue line. And then I know Sergey Bobrovsky is a big question mark, but he always does seem to turn it around at some point in the season. Uh, so the defensive part uh, or the goalie part, of the Florida Panthers is that big question mark, but offensively the Florida Panthers are an absolute juggernaut and getting, uh, you know, getting Alexander Barkov to say fully healthy, get more than 65 games. And when he played last year, that's going to be huge for the group as well. Mm. At number two, I have the Tampa Bay lightning. I have them finishing with 107 points on the season. Uh, Big reason for that is they still have Vasilevsky. Still yeah. top three goalie. I know yeah. it's debatable for a lot of people, whether it's Vasilevsky or Sororkin or Shesterkin, but mm. Vasilevsky is still one of the best goaltenders in this league, and he's going to shut shut it down. And he's probably going to – he's probably been listening to the podcast. He's heard my chirping. He's heard my my venting over the last year. Uh, so he's going to bring his A-plus game this upcoming season. But what else can you say about the Tampa Bay Lightning? They have mm. Stamkos. They have Point. Yeah. They have Kucherov. Yeah. Hagel's been an absolute beast this last year. Sergachev has blossomed underneath Victor Hedman. They still have Victor Hedman too. So again, there's not much mm-hmm. else you can say about it. Yeah. There's not there's not really a player I would fade uh, as well on the Tampa Bay Lightning, but on the rise, it would probably be Brandon Hagel or Gotta be. Mikhail Sergachev. It's got to be Hagel too because yeah. they had absolute yep. beasts of the season last year. Hagel just really started to look comfortable and, you know, he's rewarded with the contract. I usually like taking the contract angle the other way. I like guys in their contract year to really rise. But I think a guy like Hagel, who's, you know, really not had that bag thrown at him before. Mm -hmm. I think maybe that security blanket, the family's taken care of now. This is the first time it's happened for him. I think now an opportunity, we talked about some of those, you know, longstanding pieces over the last couple of years going out of Tampa, Palat, Kalorn, and others. I think now he's going to get a chance to cement himself as one of these veteran leaders that's going to lead this team offensively. But just to touch on your Florida point quickly before I finish my Tampa take, 
The Florida Panthers on the back end, you mentioned it. There's just a lot of things that went right for this team last year, Steele. And I don't know if all the stars are going to align again the way that they did last year. There's a lot of question marks for me, and that's all I'm banking on. And again, they are not a bad team. There's just so many good ones. There's lots of fantasy value to be had. I just wanted to get that off my chest. Tampa on the rise. Hagel. It was hard to find a fader on this one too, Steel. And I know in a lot of banger leagues, Tanner Janot is still a name. And I know this isn't a bold take, and this is maybe an obvious choice. I think he had that one great year. I think it was maybe his rookie year. He popped like 20-something goals, and he was a banger league yeah. beauty. Top three in hits. This is a guy that even in the fantasy realm where it's nice to have one of those guys or the keeper realm, I'm taking him at the very back end of my draft because I'm a little bit worried about him ever being able to actually produce offensively again, Steele. But I got Tampa in second for sure. And that means we got the buds in first. Let's <laughs> talk about it. Toronto Maple Leafs at number <laughs> there one position. Right. You froze a little bit there. I thought my I lost bad. you for no, a we're second, here. but we're Toronto, here. Maple, Toronto Maple Leafs at number one in the Atlantic division for both of us. I have them finishing with 115 points, give or take, Whoa. uh, you know, okay. uh, a few more, but okay. with that all being said, I actually have the Edmonton Oilers and Toronto Maple Leafs tied wow. for first in the, in the national hockey league with 115 points, uh, this next, this next, uh, season. Spicy. Uh, I'm not going to talk much about why I have them first. I think it's fairly obvious. I think it's uh, they are the team to beat. It's the it's their season to lose, like you said a few weeks ago. So yeah. I'm just going to go straight into my risers. Number one, I've got two of them. Number one, I'm going straight to Max Domi. I think it's going to be Ooh. a huge year for him. This is his home. Uh, he's wanted to play here for so long. His dad played here for so long. Uh, it's you know just having that name Domi and having that jersey on a, the Leafs mm. jersey it's going to mean a lot to him and again he signed a one-year deal for I believe it was what three million maybe he yeah, wants it, a big yeah. contract or he wants a long-term contract he wants to stay in Toronto so I think he's going to have a beast of a season he had 56 points last year between yep. Chicago and Dallas mm -hmm. but now playing with the likes of Nylander Tavares Matthews and Marner there's going to be so much more to his offensive game I'm very excited for what he brings. I okay. think he's going to need to bring – he's a banger league beauty. I think he's going to need to bring the penalty minutes down a little bit. Snot. Put his, Snot. But put his body more on the line because I'm very surprised to only see 22 hits last Me year too. from Max yeah. Domi. Me too. So that's my number one riser. Mm. Number two, I'm going straight to the blue line, John Klingberg. 33 Whoa. points in 67 games last year between mm. Anaheim and the Minnesota Wild. And it's for the same reason – uh, for why Max Domi. He's getting to play with a lot more skilled players. Toronto Maple Leafs have been waiting for a right shot defenseman who can work the power play, whether it's power play one or power play two, but they need an offensive minded right shot defenseman like John Klingberg. I think he's going to get a lot of secondary, uh, a secondary assists. Okay. But again, uh, for me, John Klingberg, 84 blocks, 55 hits, 112 shots. The peripheral stats are a little low, but I, I, I would expect them to rise quite a bit with the Toronto Maple Leafs. I want to buy into this John Klinberg ad. You know me. I've been very skeptical of it, deal because, yeah, it looks good on paper, and I don't even want to disagree with you because we've seen that he can do it at an elite level on the power play. And, yeah, that's a specific angle, but the Toronto Maple Leafs had the second-best power play in the league last year. So you want to believe that this is going to be a successful thing, but – He's draftable for me, Steele, but he's actually on my fade list. I'd be taking him more in the back end of drafts. It's not really to take away from what you're saying, actually, though, because what you're saying checks out. And if he is able to even somehow creep up and get power play one time, then I think I might be changing my tune here. It's just, again, it's like these early predictions. He's on my fade list. I have Toronto in one. Hit me with your take on that, and I'll hit you with my risers. Uh, well, I disagree with your take on that. Gosh, I don't know why he's. It, I don't know why you're fading him down the list. He like to begin with, he wasn't even. He was barely a draftable defenseman last year. Uh, mm, so I'm not saying that he's. I'm okay. not saying that he's gonna rise up the standings to like mm. round nine or round. Here 10, we go. Here he we go. Barely a. He was barely a draftable defenseman last year. Right. He's going exactly. to be a draftable defenseman this year. And I he's agree. Playing with the Toronto Maple Leafs. That's one of the big things here is when you go to a team with that much skill. Your mm. stats are bound to improve. It's and true. Him, That's true. And even with the second power play unit, 
on the second power play. Kling, Klingberg will be the quarterback. Mm-hmm. Tyler Bertuzzi, Max Domi, Matthew Nyes, and Cali Yarncroke. So I think that's yep. a great second second power play unit. Yep. So I disagree with your take on John Klingberg, but that's okay. That is okay because I think one of the things you might also maybe be forgetting is it's all on paper. They've never played together yet. Chemistry has to form. And I agree with everything you're saying. Right now, that all makes sense. They still have to play together. They still have to deal with all these improved teams in the Atlantic division that we've already talked about. And I think what might take away from this a little bit and it all being so honky dory and happy is the goaltending situation. And I think Joseph wall, I have my eyes on because I think they're going to give this kid all the opportunity to make a name for himself. And I keep reading steel that this might be more close to a 50, 50 split than a lot of people are expecting if Joseph Wall can take the opportunity because I think he's going to get it. So I think he's on the rise just based on the fact of a lot of things that you said and that I agree with, that this team is going to score goals. This team is still going to be good. It's the top team in the division. We're on the same page there. And I want to throw this out there. If not for the historically good 135 points from the Boston (laughs) Bruins last year, the Toronto Maple Leafs have already cemented themselves as the best team in this division. So I don't yeah. think we're out on the, like on a limb here. They had 111 points last year, Steel. 111 yes. points. That's 13 more. And I don't mean with the numbers, but I'm pretty sure that's right. Then the next closest team and Tampa's a very good one. So in my opinion, this team is going to be good. And that means Joseph Wall, who's going to get a look, is going to be valuable. And also, I think we're overlooking this one. Matty Nyes has got to be on the rise. He's going to get a shot in the top six. He already, we've seen him play form chemistry and I'm buying into it. And I wanted to leave it at this because I got to give you props. I love the Max Domi take because a lot of people throw hate on Max Domi and I'd implore them to look into his stats. He had 13 points last year in the playoff steal in 10 games. Let me just double check this. I believe so. 13 points in 19 games. He was an effective piece since moving to Dallas. And you mentioned his stats and now he's fired up baby. And he cares about the crest on his chest and he is going to bring it every single night. And I think that's a little bit of what this team has been lacking is that pick me up and go every single night. This guy's going to bleed blue and I'm excited to see if he can take his game to the next level. That's what I want to see from max be a leader Take your game to the next level. We know we can get 50, 60 points. Very quite so. It's that snot that the Leafs de- hey. desperately needed. Bertuzzi, Domi, and Ryan Reeves on that fourth mm-hmm. line. Very excited about this upcoming season, especially with the Atlantic Division. Thank yep. you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Make sure you're tuning in Monday through Friday, 7 o'clock in the morning Eastern time is when you can find all of our episodes. Again, stay tuned for Wednesday's episode for our first mock draft of the season. Again, thank you so much for tuning in for today's episode with Flip and I. Have a great day. Good luck with all your bets out there, and we shall see you back here again tomorrow. Peace.